Hey everyone, my name is Whitney. I am the business manager for a pallet wine company in the Urban Fork. So I help out in the tasting room, I do marketing, a little bit of everything. And this is Emily, our enologist. Oh. <laughs> Want to tell them a little bit about what you do? Yeah, so as the enologist here, um, I kind of just, I run the lab, I track um, pre-harvest numbers to see when grapes are ready to come in to be made into wine. I track the wine, meaning I track the fermentation to see where it's at. And then I help out with the quality control prior to bottling. Nice. Emily's very fun. So if you ever have any science questions, Emily is your gal. She is brilliant. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so today we are going to talk to you a little bit about the art of tasting and how to taste wine like a wine professional. So I'll be walking you through um, our tasting cards. If you are interested in getting one of these, um, you can email info at theurbancork.com and we will get you a link to download these guides um, and soon they'll be up on the website but we wanted to give the folks who tuned into our Wayne school a little bit of a preview to get your hands on these before everyone else um, so I'll walk you through um, this tasting guide as well as this accompaniment to our tasting guide where you can track what you're tasting um, and the nose the palate the finish all of those fun things that we're going to teach you today it's just a fun way to kind of keep track of your tastings and kind of see how your palate develops over time and yes okay. both Emily and I are going through the WSET program we both just completed level two and um, so these are similar to the tools that we used in that program the WSET is the wine spirit education trust um, and it's really helped both of us become better tasters Definitely. and kind of hone in on those characteristics in wine that we're looking for and help have the vocabulary to explain them. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's helped me a lot. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get started. Uh, the first thing that we're going to look at is the appearance of wine. Um, so if you're looking at a white wine, there are three colors, um, either lemon, gold, or amber. So lemon is going to be the most common color for a white wine. Gold is going to be a white wine with a hint of brown or orange, and then amber is going to be a noticeable level of brown or orange. And the way to evaluate the color of the wine is to take a white sheet of paper, so you can see this here, and you're going to examine the wine um, looking down at a 45 degree angle. So if you have the tasting kit that we um, have accompanying this tasting, we have our um, 2017 Pinot Gris. So looking at this, um, you want to look at the core of the wine out to the rim. So if it's got kind of a watery rim, that's going to be a pale color. And it's kind of hard to see on here. Um, I also have a Chardonnay Ford that's got a little bit more color. It's hard to see. Maybe you can see in the glass um, how this one here is a little more pale versus the Chardonnay. Uh, it's hard to see on camera, but uh, it's a fun activity if you have wine at home or you're going to be doing a tasting with friends. Um, so the colors can either be um, pale, medium, or deep. So if we're talking about red wines, um, the colors with red wines are going to be ruby, which is the most common color, purple, which is going to be wine that's got a little hint of blue or purple, garnet, which is going to have um, some noticeable orange or browning, um, and then tawny, which is going to be more brown than red. Um, so that is the color. The next things we look at, I'm going to use my little cheat sheet here, is going to be the nose. So when you um, smell the wine, you're first going to smell and then swirl and then sniff again. Uh, so the, the aromas on the nose are either going to be light, medium, or pronounced. So a light aroma is going to be something where you struggle to come up with um, clear. Got to dig your nose. Yeah, you really got to search for those. Uh, search for those aromas. They're going to be muted, not defined, not clearly expressed, whereas pronounced is going to be clearly identifiable, easily accessible. You're going to smell and be like, oh my gosh, I smell green apple. That would be uh, pronounced. And then somewhere in the middle is going to be um, medium. So then um, down to the aroma characteristics. So there are three types of aromas you can see on here. We have primary aromas, secondary aromas, and tertiary aromas. So the primary aromas are going to be those aromas that come from 
the grapes themselves, mm -hmm. and then their original alcoholic fermentation. Um, so those are going to be your florals, your green fruits, your red fruits, um, black fruits, herbaceous characteristics, herbal characteristics, spice characteristics, um, and then other things like whetstone. Um, Which surprised me before taking this class. I would never think before that a whetstone would be a primary yeah. flavor. Yeah. But... That was yeah. the thing that it really taught me that helped me be a better taster is I was looking for those oaky characteristics like vanilla, those aging characteristics like earthiness, and I didn't know where to attribute those. So I would smell something and say, am I looking for vanilla, even if I knew it was done in stainless steel, or am I looking for, you know, coffee or um, leather if it's not done in oak and it's not an older wine. So understanding these primary, secondary, and tertiary characteristics really helped me become a much better taster yeah. for sure. And it breaks the wine down too. You know, when you know what to look for, these different categories, yes. it kind of, it also makes you appreciate the wine too, that it's not just a one dimensional drink. It's there are layers to it and being yes. able to say, okay, well, the primary flavors are strawberry and then secondary flavors are this and tertiary flavors are this. And yep. Makes you appreciate what you're drinking. Yes, for sure. Um, so those are all of the primary primary flavor characteristics. The secondary are going to be um, flavors and aromas that come from um, post-fermentation winemaking. So that will be um, your yeast, which would be your lees or autolysis if you're drinking a traditional method sparkling wine, or floor if you're drinking a sherry. Um, malolactic conversion, which makes my favorite Chardonnays. <laughs> That's those buttery, creamy flavors. And then oak, which is going to be your vanillas, your coffee, coconut, cedar, um, chocolate. And then lastly is tertiary, which comes from um, bottle aging and maturation. So those are going to be in red wine, dried fruit, leather, earth, mushroom, uh, kind of meatiness, tobacco, uh, white wine, you're going to get more dried fruit, orange marmalade, um, Gasoline is another one that's common with like a Riesling, um, cinnamon, some other um, some other spices, and then there's the, the deliberate oxidiz oxidization. Did I say that right? Oxidization. Oxidization. <laughs> thank you. Um, almond, hazelnut, walnut, chocolate. Um, it's more of like the richer, more complex yes. flavors that you pick up. Um, and then examining the wine on your palate, uh, there's a few things you'll look at. The first one is sweetness. So wines are going to be um, either dry, off dry, medium, or sweet, and that's going to be the perceived residual sugar that you're tasting. So sometimes fruitiness in wine can be um, almost experiences sweetness, but it's not necessarily a sweet wine. Mm -hmm. uh, the sweetness comes from the residual sugar left over after um after the yeast yeah, have there. Kind of like after you've had a piece of candy, you know that you've had candy in your mouth. That's a great way of putting it. Yeah, so do you detect sugar? Um, the next thing we will look at is acidity, which is going to be that mouth-watering sensation. Um, and then the opposite of that mouth-watering sensation is going to be the tannins. So that will be kind of like a drying, astringent texture in your mouth. Uh, those tannins will cling to your saliva and kind of dry out your mouth. Um, and then we're going to look at alcohol. So low alcohol will be below 11%. Medium alcohol, which is most most wines, is going to be 11% to 13.9%. And then high alcohol will be anything over 14%. And that's not for dessert wines. Dessert wines have a different uh, classification. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> another wine Another class. wine class. <laughs> um, and then we'll look at body. So either light, medium, or full-bodied. And then um, flavor intensity. So similar to that... Aroma intensity, are you easily identifying those characteristics? Are flavor characteristics from different um, categories? Is there primary, secondary, tertiary? In those primaries, are you getting red fruit? Are you getting florals? Are you getting a combination of those flavors? Um, and then your finish. So the finish is how long those pleasant sensations are lingering, how long those flavors are lasting. So not necessarily that bitter taste in your mouth if it's a high tannin wine, but those um, desirable characteristics of why, why you drink wine. Did I leave anything out? No, I think you okay. covered it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot there. Um, so we'll, we'll walk you through uh, these three wines and explain what we're experiencing. And if you're drinking these wines along with us, feel free to leave a comment and let us know um, 
what you're tasting. So not everyone's going to taste the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. Everyone's palate is different. So that's kind of the, the fun of winemaking. Bye, Fred. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of winemaking. Uh, okay, so this is the 2017 L. Donovan uh, Pinot Gris. Uh, so looking at the color, we already looked at this one. This is going to be a pale lemon color. So let's take a look at the, uh, the nose. So I'm starting to, I get some honeysuckle, mm -hmm. some floral, and some green fruit, like green apple. Definitely. Smells good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I want to mention too, if you didn't purchase the package, but you were interested in doing so, um, you can do that at shop.urbancork.com and buy the September tasting package. You can either pick it up in our tasting room, we have local delivery, or you can have that shipped to a number of different states. Just check our website and see if we ship to, to your state. So one way to look at the acidity is after you spit the wine or swallow, lean forward and see how that saliva collects in your mouth. It's, you look kind of silly doing it, but you really experience that salivation and that... Yeah, it's the length of how yes. long you salivate. So, you know, and as you let it pool in your mouth, you can count one, two, three, and however long it takes if it's a short period of time and then salivation stops, you know that it's probably not a high acidic wine. Um, but if you're just mouth watering for a long time, you you can say that it's a higher acidity wine. I would definitely say that this is a higher acidity wine. Yes. <laughs> On the sweetness level, I am I'm not getting a ton of sweetness, so I would say this is probably a dry wine. Mm -hmm. um, tannins, I don't think we mentioned this before, Tannins are something you're going to look for in a red wine. Those are housed in the skin. Um, and since white wines don't have much contact with the skin or any contact at all, you're not going to be expecting those um, those tannins. Yeah. And then alcohol on this was a medium. It is 13.9. So it's just at the, the high range of medium. Uh, and then body, I would say it's not quite light body. I'd probably say medium bodied yeah um just it's really it's a really nice nice refreshing wine it's refreshing but it's it doesn't just go away it kind yes. of it has a little bit of lingering and mm -hmm. yeah so what would you say on the finish uh finish i would probably say i would say it would probably a medium it's yeah. not super long but it's all like it it's doesn't there just go away yeah no yeah. i agree Okay, let's move on to the 2015 L. Donovan um, Pinot Noir Reserve. Got to remember which way to turn things <laughs> in the mirror. So this was aged uh, for, I believe, 26 months in 50% uh, new French oak. So knowing that, uh, we can kind of be on the lookout for those uh, oak characteristics. But first, let's take a look at the color. So this color definitely, um, definitely isn't as ruby. I would say this is more of like a garnet. I don't know if it's easy to see on the screen here. There's a little bit of that oranging, a little bit of that um, browning. Which again, this was aged in oak for um, a little longer, so that could give some of that oxidation. Oxidation? Oxidation, thank you. I don't know why I can't say that word. Um, so yeah, I would probably say garnet in color. Yeah. Um, and then the intensity, one thing we can do with a red wine that we can't do with a white wine is um, set it down on a white sheet of paper and then look down at the, through the glass. And if you can see, easily see the stem of your glass, then um, that's gonna be more of a pale color versus a deep wine where you can't see anything. Or if you have writing on your paper, if you can look through and easily read, um, that's more of a pale color versus a deep color. I keep wanting to say pronounced. <laughs> um, so as far as the intensity on the color, what would you say on this one? Um, I would 
say it's probably a medium. Yeah. Um, but maybe on the lighter side of medium. It, that's exactly what I was thinking. Because I can see the words through the wine, but not super sharply. Yes. I agree. Okay, now let's take a look at the nose. Mm, yum. This smells really good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and right off the bat, I'm getting those oak characteristics. I get some vanilla. I get some cooked strawberry, too. Yes, definitely get some cooked strawberries. And on this one, it's a 2015. That's um, So we could start to get some of those tertiary flavors. Like I get a little bit of um, almost leather mm -hmm. and an earthiness. Yeah. It smells really good. I wish you guys could smell through <laughs> Through the screen. I can tell before I've tasted it that I'm, I'll like this one. <laughs> so as far as sweetness goes, this is definitely going to be a dry wine. Mm -hmm. And then the acidity. I was getting about a high. Yeah. Definitely some mouthwatering and a little bit of tannin. So Pinot Noir is going to be a thin skinned grape. So you're not going to expect a lot of tannin, but, but I get a little there. bit. Mm -hmm. the, ta the tannins and the acidity really balance each other really well. Mm -hmm. And then as far as body goes, I would probably say medium body. Mm -hmm. I definitely had lighter Pinots, um, but this has some, some oomph to it. Yeah, And that's from the aging, right? I believe so. Yeah. So the things that help a uh, wine age well will be the acidity, um, tannin. So if you've had like a wine like a Nebbiolo uh, that has really harsh tannins, as those age, it will kind of um, soften a little soften, bit. Soften, right? yeah. It'll fall out of solution, I believe, is the technical term. But um, this wine, I think, has that good acidity and a little bit of tannin and just really pronounced flavors. And it's, mm -hmm. I think it's really nice. Um, are there any other, you said cooked strawberries, are you getting any other primary or secondary or any tertiary characteristics in this one? Maybe just a little bit of cranberry. I yes, don't think that that's the that. most pronounced mm -hmm. primary uh, yeah. flavor or aroma, but I get little notes of it, I think. Yeah, and that's really, really nice. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that's really nice about doing tastings like this is the more you taste, the more you can start to identify those characteristics that are going to be present in different wines. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, this has helped me become a much better taster. I'm sure it's helped you. Yeah, definitely. Kind of narrowing it down. So if you're tasting a Pinot Noir, you know that you're probably not going to be tasting green apple. You're probably not going to be tasting pineapple. Um, so it kind of helps hone in and identify, okay, this will ha this could have some red fruits. What are the red fruits I'm tasting? Yeah, it helps narrow it down a little bit. Yes. Okay. Up next is the El Donovan 2015 Cab Franc. So right off the bat, you can see that this is a a different color than the than the Pinot we just had. So again, let's take a look. I think this is definitely a little bit more of a ruby. I think maybe a little bit of little tiny hint of that like orangish brown yeah but i would say this is more on the the ruby side mm -hmm. and looking down the stem it's definitely i can still see the stem but it's definitely a little bit harder to see mm -hmm. and then looking through it's definitely hard to read yeah <laughs> if if at all so on this one i would say medium but the higher side of medium yeah for the uh, color intensity and as it turns out, with when it comes to tastings, you can get a little bit more into it. So with the class that we just took, it keeps it simple um, to pale, medium, and deep. Mm -hmm. um, but there can be a medium deep. There are more categories. But when yes. you're first starting off, it's important to kind of focus on kind of ends of the spectrum and then the middle. Yes, that's a great point. So when you're looking at those characteristics, if you're brand new to wine tasting, just try to say, oh, am I getting red fruit or am I getting black fruit? Am I getting stone fruit or am I getting citrus. herbaceous characteristics or, <laughs> or citrus? Mm -hmm. And kind of identifying those. And then once you get comfortable identifying those characteristics, 
then going in, do I get strawberry? Do I get cherry? Do I get black cherry? Do I get red cherry? Mm -hmm. And just kind of building on that knowledge as, as you taste more, because it tastes practice. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Fun practice, but it takes, takes practice. Okay, so to let's go to the nose. Mm -hmm. I'm getting herbaceousness. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a medium for intensity mm -hmm. on the nose yes. because, you know, I, d I don't smell it out here, but as I get a little closer, I smell tomato leaf and a green pepper. Mm -hmm. I don't have to put my nose deep in it to try it. What am I looking for? What am yes. I, what am I smelling? And it's interesting, the more I smell, like when I first took a sniff, all I could smell was green pepper. But now that I smell some more, I feel like I'm getting some of those tertiary characteristics. I'm getting some of that tobacco. Some leather, perhaps. Yes. And I'm getting a little um, black pepper, too. Mm -hmm. Black pepper, green Definitely. pepper. And it's really fun to taste with someone. Yeah. I really, I have a harder time when I do this by myself. Because it's nice to have someone to play off of and be like, oh, you're not crazy. I smell that too. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. tasting with a friend is highly, highly encouraged. Well, it's fun also when uh, get-togethers with friends or your family to say, let's let's just pick out a bottle of wine and what, what do you smell? What mm -hmm. do you taste? Um, because everyone's senses are different. And... 100%. Okay, let's take, let's take a taste. I definitely get more tannin on yeah. this. Mm -hmm. That's something that my my brain immediately went to. Is there was a little bit more grip to it. Yes, that's yes grip. <laughs> which makes sense when you compare a Pinot Noir, which we just tasted, to something like a Cab Franc. Yes. And what about what are you, what are your thoughts on the acidity? Um, I wa initially was thinking medium, but it does kind of persist. So myself saliva. <laughs> Kind of persists a little bit, I think, beyond that medium point. Mm -hmm. But and then the alcohol on this one is going to be medium. Higher end of medium again, it's a thirteen point eight. Um, and then body on this one, I definitely say it's a fuller body. Definitely. And then, are you tasting anything that you didn't smell? So most of the time, with those aroma characteristics. The flavor characteristics are going to be the same, but there's some things that you can taste a little easier than you would smell. That yeah, makes sense. That, that's true, and it's interesting to see, you know, the differences between what you smell and what you taste, because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they do overlap, and then mm -hmm. sometimes it's, you do pick up on some extra flavors there that your nose wasn't able to pick up. Exactly. And what about the finish on this one? What would you say, short, medium, or long? Mm -hmm. medium mm -hmm. I would say what are your thoughts I would agree mm. and another thing that's interesting too is to let a wine sit for a little while let the bottle be open for a little bit let that oxygen interact mm -hmm. if you know you're gonna be serving a wine uh, especially wine that's maybe a little bit older decant it and then let it sit for an hour before you serve it and it's really interesting to see how that interaction with oxygen yeah. kind of opens up that flavor. So a lot of times you'll hear yeah. people talk about that wine really opened up. Um, so I opened these a couple hours ago um, and as they've been s sitting definitely yeah it would have been interesting to see what they would tasted like right at the beginning yeah you know, and see how they changed. Yes. Well are there any questions before we wrap up on these wines? We're excited that you joined us. We yeah. hope that this was some useful information. Um, if you didn't get a chance to taste along with us, uh, you can order this tasting package at shop.theurbancork.com. Uh, if you are interested in one of our um, handy dandy uh, tasting guides, um, either the little worksheet or uh, the flavors and aromas, just email info at theurbancork.com and we can get a link out for you to download those. Uh, we'll be back next month. We haven't decided what the class will be on yet, but we will be back next month. And uh, if you have any questions or want to um, throw in what you thought of these wines, love to hear from you. See yeah. if you picked up any other aromas or flavors. Uh, but Anything yeah. that we missed, maybe. Yes.
It is a collaborative environment with wine tasting. So <laughs> we'd love to hear your thoughts.